Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I will be doing a thorough review of the Deep Learning A to Z Hands-On Artificial Neural Networks course on Udemy. Now this is a course in Python that will be teaching both the theory of deep learning as well as implementing that in the Python language. And so because of that, they don't actually assume that you know Python. They have here, if I scroll down into requirements, we have high school at, at a mathematics level and basic Python programming language knowledge. Okay, so not too bad. It is $28 right now when it is on sale. That price is not too bad. I was reviewing the Jose Portilla's machine learning course earlier and that went down to 40. This is even better at $28. Now, of course, it isn't quite the same thing because this isn't actually the same amount of material. Uh, this is 22 and a half hours, and I believe the other course was about 44 hours or so, um, but uh, they don't teach the same thing. The Jose Portillas course is on machine learning fundamentals, and, uh, and this is deep learning, which is just a more modern technique, okay? All right, so for $28, you get this course uh, that's very popular, 337,000 students so far. That's a tremendous number. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at this. Uh, so basically, what does this have to offer? Well, you're going to learn, of course, neural networks. Uh, I don't usually use the word artificial neural networks, although uh, they, they mean the same thing. There's many different architectures of neural networks, which are very common such as convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, uh, self-organizing maps, a lot of other stuff as well, which we will get into in due time. We can see some introduction. So what is deep learning, some bonuses, and let's just get right into the actual content here. Okay, so intuition. We have, uh, this is not even really intuition. Uh, this is straight into how it actually works. Activation functions are a technical detail of neural networks, and you'll learn about that there. Uh, how do they work? Gradient descent. I, I'm not sure if this really qualifies as intuition. This is really uh, just actually how machine learning uh, is able to train neural networks. Many of these techniques work for other methods as well. Um, and they're, that's why in machine learning courses, it's good to teach what gradient descent is uh, because you really do need that for neural networks, uh, for actually training them uh, and even, even doing it in the in practice in Python, it's really, really good to know about, uh, about how those optimizers work so that, uh, so that you can understand the graphs. Convolutional neural networks are very well known for computer vision tasks, as well as some other things as well, although that's probably what they'll use them for. So CNN intuition, we have how CNNs work. So ReLU is an activation function that's also commonly used in the in the artificial neural network above, uh, but got very popular around the time of convolutional neural, ne convolutional neural networks. Uh, pooling and flattening, very common techniques that you'll need. Uh, I can't think of what they mean by full connection, but I am sure that, oh, okay, that basically means um, a, a convolutional neural network is uh, all these things combined. Most importantly, the convolution operation, understanding how that uh, exactly mathematically what that does uh, and why you might want to do it. And if you put all of this together, then you're going to get a CNN, basically. Um, I'm kind of surprised they do softmax and cross entropy here. I probably would have done it up here in the intuition, uh, but that's totally fine. Um, okay, so building a CNN. So how would you do that? Uh, RNN intuition. So now we're getting into part three, recurrent neural networks. Uh, these are very common for time series based models. Uh, so maybe forecasting. Most commonly, uh, you'll probably hear about it in the application of uh, natural language processing, because as I'm saying a sentence here, uh, a sentence is a sequence. It's like this is a sentence. It's first this, then is, then uh, then sentence. And so we might use recurrent neural networks, which basically are recursive. Uh, they keep going and, and going. Um, it'll make more sense when you actually see it, uh, but one at a time we feed in those words um, and that, that makes a sequence. And so we need a particular neural network architecture for that uh, known as RNNs. Uh, there is some other variations here. There is actually a lot of different LSTM or um, honestly just recurrent neural network structures and you can learn about those when, uh, when you need to. There's a lot of them. Okay, so how to build an RNN. Clearly, there's uh, a lot of steps. I'm kind of surprised there's 15 steps to build an RNN, but that's just way, the way that they laid it out. Okay, so even all of this, uh, there's still 16 more sections. After this, you know, these, the, these three pieces here, you'll have a pretty good understanding uh, of deep learning. And so 
if you really wanted to stop at any point, not the end, uh, I would probably make it part three here. Of course, there is much more for a reason, um, but you can get a pretty good understanding of deep learning uh, after part one, part two, part three. Uh, but getting more in depth, possibly into some stuff that I'm not even super familiar with. Part four, self-organizing maps. Okay, a quick introduction, uh, intuition. So we're looking at k-means. I guess they already looked at k-means, or maybe they're assuming that you did in another video. I can't, I, I didn't see when they talked about it in this one. Um, but anyways, we have k-means um, and building a self-organizing map. Okay, steps one to four. Mega case study. Okay, part five, Boltzmann machines. Again, something, this is something I'm not super familiar with, but I knew, I know the basic idea of them. Um, yeah, since, I, since I'm not going to claim to be an expert, I am going to kind of move through this rather quickly. Part six, autoencoders. I am quite familiar with those. Uh, intuition. So how do you build these? What are different, uh, what, what are different types and why you might need different types of autoencoders? How to build an autoencoder. Uh, we start using PyTorch here. We have regression and classification intuition. This is really funny that they have this here, and I really don't understand why this would be here. Um, what I would do instead is make it so that you've learned this outside of the course, and then you can learn linear regression and logistic regression before all of this stuff, uh, because honestly, this placement of this makes absolutely no sense. Uh, I don't know anyone uh, other than the maker of this course that would really recommend this in this order. Uh, I think what they're doing is that they're suggesting that you learn, well, you wanted to learn a deep learning course, and so they got you started in deep learning. Um, but uh, honestly, what should have been done leading up to it is all of this stuff. Uh, so I'm going to have to leave that as a, a bit of a down point. This, uh, this, does, this does not make much sense, to be honest. Uh, data processing template, data preprocessing, and logistic regression. And that's pretty standard for something that comes before. So it really does confuse me why all of that stuff is there. Uh, but the rest of this, really, really nice. I think they covered what they need to. I think they covered even more than they needed to. Self-organizing maps and Boltzmann machines is not quite necessary in my opinion. Um, and so if you were to stop, uh, then I would definitely stop at, uh, at part three, not, probably not beforehand. Um, anytime after is fine. Uh, but I think this is a great, great, great course. Um, I do have that problem with it, as I said a couple times, and that seems very odd to me. And that makes me not want to recommend it extremely strongly because I feel like Andrew Ng's deep learning course and his machine learning course sets you up in a better way that makes more sense um, than this one does. And uh, especially Jose Portilla's uh, machine learning class, I would definitely recommend that over this. Uh, but nonetheless, with that, uh, with that small complaint about an, uh, a little bit of a weird ordering, not a big deal. I'm sure that they laid it out in a way that it still makes sense, given that the high ratings are there. Um, not a big deal. Okay, so I, I would I would recommend this in general. Uh, I would recommend some things over it. I leave. I will leave everything in the video description if you want to take a look at some of the other things, some of my other suggestions, um, some of my some of the material that I, I strongly suggest, probably more than this. Um, anyways, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope you have a great day or week, guys. Well, both. <laughs> I hope you have a great day and a great week. Uh, and I'll see you later, guys. Have a good day.